Hi, my name is Dick Brzezowski, I'm an Extension Educator with the University of Maine Cooperative Extension, and I'm the Principal Investigator for a research project for SARE, Northeast SARE, on uh, foot rot and elimination of foot rot on farms in the Northeast. <laughs> and part of uh, foot rot prevention is proper trimming. So today I'm going to show you how to properly trim the feet of a sheep, depending on the season, the weather, um, the, the breed of sheep, even the color of the pigment of the hooves make a difference on how fast they grow. Typically, in my experience, this is a black hoofed sheep, um, and typically I found that the black hoofed sheep, typically they, their hooves grow slower than a white pigmented hoof sheep. Foot rot is a contagious disease that is detrimental to sheep. Uh, when they have foot rot, they can't move appropriately. They're on their knees um, grazing. Um, so the productivity, performance, and even breeding. Uh, a ram with foot rot probably won't be able to mount a ewe for breeding. You'll probably want to trim at least two to three times a year um, at a minimum. And some, some breeds, as I mentioned before, you may need to trim every month or ten times a year perhaps. So it really depends on how fast those that hooves are growing. She's a small ewe, so I can just turn her and flip her around for you to see. But as you can see, uh, her hooves uh, are cloven, so two sides, they're symmetrical. The tips are called toes or digits. The backs are called as a heel, and the, the pad itself is, a, is the sole. Interior, though, is called an axial surface or an axial wall. And as a kid, I learned how to trim feet in 4-H, but I never learned about trimming that interior wall, and that's really important, especially for getting rid of foot rot. The tools you use in trimming feet um, vary. They're either shears or knives, and I recommend both because each tool does a specific uh, job. These are three different types of shears or trimmers. Uh, this one has a serrated edge for probably bigger, bigger hooves or uh, for rams or some older ewes or some breeds of sheep that have really big feet. So you want to make sure that you um, have some nice sharp shears. And then the other tools are hoof knives. I've got three different kinds here. They come in either double bladed, here's a small one with two, two sides to it, and it's, uh, the edges on both sides are cutting edges. This one has a cutting edge all the way down, it is partial edge here. And this one here is a left-handed um, knife with a cutting side only on one side. You want to make sure that these are sharp when you're using them. And if you have a sheep with foot rot or any kind of infection on her feet or his feet, you want to make sure that you're dipping uh, the tools into a disinfectant solution. I have Novosan solution here. It's a disinfectant uh, that's used on farms uh, pretty commonly. And so you want to make sure that you're not going to spread the disease from one hoof to another. So right now I'll show you how to trim. Look at this hoof. I can see some growth coming in. You want to make sure that that's trimmed off. So I, I trim right to the pad. Try not to trim excessively because you don't want to draw too much blood. If you do have blood drawn, you want to use a blood stopper, a powder, and, and have that available. But you can see as uh, I've taken the, you can see the <laughs> tissue, the dark, the white, and then the sole. You can sort of see how her foot uh, hoof grows um, just by the, di the different color coloration of her pad. Most people think, well, I'm done now, but that's not true. That's what I used to think too, but you really need to take off this interior, this axial surface or axial wall off um, to make sure that you get all that out, because that is a place where um, uh, growth of bacteria that causes foot rot can, can live inside between the tissues. She's not infected, but I'm going to disinfect the tools each time anyway. By scooping out with this sharp knife, just paring it off, you see the difference between this side and this side now. See how I've taken just the interior, that axial portion off? Do the same for this side now. Now she's a fairly young lamb, so she doesn't have an excess of growth there, but some of the older ewes or, or rams, or uh, they would have excess of growth there, and that would be a prime location for that bacteria to grow that causes foot rot. So here's one that's been trimmed and one that hasn't been trimmed. 
Another part, part you need to be conscious of as a sheep producer is uh, this little area in between the hooves that's called inter, interdigital and that's where foot scald takes place. Foot scald is different than foot rot. Foot scald is caused by a certain bacteria as well which, is, which is a, plays a role in foot uh, rot but if you have foot scald it would be a reddening of the tissue of the skin in between the digits and she's nice and clean you don't see any reddening. Foot rot would be you'd have a foul smell um, you would have tissue that would be rotting. There'd be, some of it would be uh, deformed, the foot would be deformed, and it would, you'd know just from the smell, it's a, a real uh, putrid smell because it's tissue rotting. Now her back hoof and her front hoof are sort of shaped slightly differently. Sometimes the toes are longer on the back hoof. See, I'll, I'll do this back hoof at this point, holding the fore hoof in front. You can see right here, I'm, I've got so tight you can almost see the, um, well, the capillaries in that foot, you can start seeing the, the blood just under the surface. If you make them bleed, you'll just want to make sure it stops and keep them clean, put them on a clean surface. Foot, after this process of trimming, um, especially if you had foot rot on your property, you'd want to be foot bathing with a 10% zinc solution, zinc sulfate solution, sorry. You can see how I've trimmed all the excess off. I'm down to her pad. She's nice and clean. Some people um, make the mistake of cutting the tips of the toe off. And you, do want, you don't want excess growth out there, but you don't want to have a square, square nose toe because that's a place that could, the tissue could divide and you'll have uh, trouble with bacteria getting in there. The, the bacteria that causes foot rot is only viable at 45 degrees Fahrenheit and above. So um, it can live, though, in a manure pack in a barn um, inside. So you could have foot rot any time of year in any part of the country. Um, but um, it only lives about um, two weeks without any animals. So if, if it's in the ground outside, it's only going to live two weeks out on the pasture. But you want to make sure that you're not putting clean sheep back on dirty pasture. So you want to wait that time out. The big part of prevention of foot rot is never getting on your property. So be very careful about what animals come on your property, even the people that come on your property, have a biosecurity plan so that you can prevent any, that disease from getting on your property. If you do bring a ram in for breeding or some uh, replacement use, make sure that they go into isolation um, for at least three weeks and, and trim their hooves and see if, they're, uh, if they have healthy feet as well as their whole body, if their whole being is healthy. You can see how she's standing. She's standing nice and flat on her, on her feet, um, not favoring one leg or another. So that's what you want to do. Watch your, watch your flock and watch how they move. See who's limping. See who's uh, maybe kneeling to eat. That's a telltale sign that you've got some problems in the flock. 